working in the environments that you worked in, how did you keep your mental health in check? Look, I, I, I did go through some pretty dark times, um, but I suppose a few things kept me um, from throwing myself off the ledge. Um, first thing was I understood that I, I couldn't just pigeonhole my life to my military. I, I had to get out and, and move on. I also had to ensure that I was strong for my son. Um, he, he's the most important thing in my life. Uh, and through those dark times, I knew that I had to find a way to be strong for him. And he makes me happy. Being around him would send to me. And for me, uh, getting out of toxic environments, uh, that would trigger me. So I left the army. The army, you know. 26 years, right? Was, it, look, it wasn't for me anymore. Um, it, was, it was triggering me. Um, I was quite angry. And I do hear a lot that you know, as guys leave the army, that's when they um, have strong uh, mental health issues. For me, it was the opposite. When I left the military um, and was able to pursue things, different things, um, I, I, I felt freer. I felt not constantly reminded of the trauma that I was going through. And I felt yeah, just less constrained. Um, and I felt free to explore and do other things. Um, and I think that really helped as well, uh, leaving the military. You know, uh, you know I, my struggle's not over. Um, I don't know if it ever will be. Um, and it, it, I wouldn't say it's a daily struggle, but it's, it's, uh, it, it happens quite regularly. And you just need to continue to work on it that's all I can say. Uh, and everyone's different. But I just know that's worked for me. So what a wonderful opportunity for you to now, you know, narrate your own story. I, I made a decision that unlike you would see with a lot of older veterans, is that the military defined them and became their life. I didn't want that. I wanted to move on from that and do other things. Uh, fulfilling things still want to help the community but do it in other ways uh, um, so I can build on my story not just just be constrained by military 100 percent I'm wondering if that helped I don't know maybe sitting down here today I mean you know there may be other fellas in your or women in your situation as well so it's just creating a platform for, for storytelling and and you know the journey continues uh, what words have you heard around mental health, Nathan? Crazy? Yeah, um, losing it, losing your shit. Can't angry. keep it together. Yeah. Strung out. Always angry. Yeah. Anxious. When I'm tired. Yeah. Um, yeah. Words can go off. The stigma that. continues, right? The stigma continues. Treating people with dignity is the first act of healing. Uh, you don't know what anyone's going through, so always be kind. I guess what what more would you say to that? Well, I mean, these days we've got to treat them because you know you don't treat people poorly because they've got an knee injury or they've got an ankle injury. That's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, sometimes it's invisible, um, so it's hard to diagnose. But once it's diagnosed, we need to we need to show compassion. We need to show empathy uh, because you know sometimes they've been through more than you have. So uh, you know maybe a little bit of respect as well. Uh, we get on military has a little bit of a way to go as well, um, is they need to actually have respite postings. I mean, the military have talked about it for 26 years. I was never on a respite posting. Um, but these people who go on deployments need to go somewhere where they can rest. Uh, I think there was a study out there that showed that if you go away for a high, high activity for six months, you need six months rest. That doesn't happen. It doesn't. Sometimes it's just a couple of weeks or a month off. It doesn't cut it, does it? Even the guys I work with now, they are tired. They're tired.
I had never talked to them. So I understand that you know we, we are coming into some very turbulent geopolitical times. We are, you know, we're moving into some very uncertain times. Um, but we don't need to tire our guys before the big push. We need to ensure that our, our men and women are, are rested, and ready. Um, we need to we need to fight smart, not just fight hard. Veterans are still taking their own lives. What thoughts would you like to share to any veteran struggling with their mental health um, or PTSD? Uh, just know that you're not alone. And there are people out there that love you, especially if you've got kids. Whatever you do, understand that it's not you that suffers, it's them. As a, um, if you need to talk to someone, any one of us here, would rather listen to you drone on for two hours than sit through one of your funerals. You know, Swiss Aid does some amazing work. Uh, Sutz has, has got an uh, app that helps with mental, mental health, uh, physical health, wellness. Uh, if you're a veteran or just a military member, get on it. Um, and they've done some amazing work. Um, they've also done a lot of good community outreach. They sponsor Army Rugby now um, and they're doing a lot of a lot with uh, Kuji RSL and a lot with uh, some of the other organisations around the eastern suburbs. So, um, if you can support them. What advice would you give to troops who have overcome frontline trauma? Um, just know two things, or uh, well, probably a few things. But the first one is that you're not alone. You're not the first. Uh, and there's always people there uh, to talk to. There's a lot of us older guys out there who've been through combat uh, and we've come out the other side. Um, some of us have been through dark times and we, we have all come out the other side. Um, so if you need to talk to anyone, you can. Also, you know, the word stoicism is thrown around a lot. Sometimes talking is good, sometimes just being stoic, being pragmatic. Understand that there are people out there who do love you and uh, who need you, um, and so you have to be strong and be there for them. What makes an ideal team member? Um, someone who's selfless, uh, look stoic, and I might be actually mentioning this about a leader as well. You know, someone who's stoic, someone who will um, help others out uh, and help themselves out, but help help their teammates out when. That they're down, uh, someone pulls their weight. So it's the perfect team member. Um, someone who's understanding and understands that not, nobody's perfect and probably uh, doesn't judge as well. Probably helps. Good qualities. Mm. In an under pressure environment where a snapshot decision has to be made to ensure the lives of you and your friends are safe and secure. What would you say was the most important factor to ensure this happened? Probably two things, uh, training and actually making a decision. Sometimes hesitations and not making a decision is the most dangerous thing you can do. So just make a decision, own it, mm. run with it. If it needs to change, then change it. Um, but make a decision. Yeah, 100%. And if the situation changes, then you change with them. Was there something special that you did for good luck, I guess, uh, in the in military world? You know, this is many years ago, and it was in my 20s, um, but I do remember um, that in the team all the first time, I had a letter from my girlfriend at the time that I used to keep in my left pocket. Yeah, that's the only way I used to do it. It's the only way I remember. Um, in 09 and 2012, uh, etc., which was far more dangerous than Timor, um, I, no, I didn't do anything, uh, nothing I can recall. Did you witness or were involved in any near death experiences? I know we talked about it. What were the main factors that kept you alive? Uh, probably my sense of humour, but also <laughs> just keeping, keeping, um, just keeping my cool um, and just focusing on the job at hand. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events during your time in the service? There's a million, uh, but I will recall one. Um, 
was when we were in team all right on the border. There was a particular militia member who used to wear uh, soccer boots um, when, he, when he would be on patrol. Uh, he was a Timorous militia member. And my Sig, who is now a Y1 uh, one night, um, put on his soccer boots and walked around the base. He told me about it. Walked around the base. Um, and then he then woke up the boss and the Sarge <laughs> and told them, um, look, look, there's the boots. I think, I think it's a militia. And the whole base lost their minds. Um, and it was a complete prank. He but he got everyone going. Yeah, he was a deep bag. <laughs> yeah. This is the same person who nudged the boss and said, hey boss, do you like apples? Said, You're on picket. Do you like them apples? So, yeah. <laughs> and now he's a white one. He's an RSM. So, what a character. Yeah, he's, he was a very funny man. Did they come down hard on him? <laughs> no. They laughed it no, off. they did not. That's the spirit. Yep. No, they did not. <laughs> Good on him. Uh, what were some of the pranks that you or some other veterans uh, pulled on each other? Oh, <laughs> I, probably not. Some of them probably aren't appropriate for this forum. Uh, Nothing's just, inappropriate for this forum. <laughs> I'll probably just leave that one. Is the the prank of the soccer boots uh, by my Sig and Timor? Um, I could. There was quite a lot that I have seen over the years, but I'll probably just leave it at that. Um, yeah, some of them might get people arrested, so. <laughs> no, the last time I was everyone was happy. How did you guys keep entertained or make light of a bad situation? Well, we, I think um, every military member, especially a veteran, can definitely uh, understand that we ended up with really dark senses of humour. I suppose we just uh, keep everyone laughing. Uh, you know, it's, when you see a bad situation, people just seem to make a, a, a joke out of it. Um, of which, in civilian life with civilian friends, would be grossly inappropriate, but to us, it was quite funny. Um, uh, and I have been reminded of that over the years that some jokes that you tell in the army you cannot tell to civilian friends. But that, uh, that's, I suppose that's how we kept ourselves amused um, with the, the, our incredibly dark humour, of which lasts to this day. My best friends, my what I would call brothers um, from another mother, uh, are all in the military. Um, they're, the, you know, they're the people who I would rely on for anything, you know, all in the military. So. And those are relationships forged over a very long period of time. Yeah. You know, I think we discussed before that, you know, uh, relationships forged in the military and that, you know, connection while you're in the most isolated part of the world, you're facing, you know, threats, you're, you know, decompressing together to get your mind off threats. Mm. That's, that bonds you for a, a lifetime, really. Two of my best friends, I've known since 1995, uh, so yeah, and uh, some of my other close friends we've known for you know 20 years, so almost 30. Jeez, yeah, a long time. Taking you back to when you returned from deployment and adjusted to everyday life, what is that transition like, and what steps did you take to make it a smooth crossover? Uh, well, when I was with my wife, uh, it wasn't a smooth crossover. To be honest, it was quite difficult. Usually the day before one of us left, um, and about two weeks after we got back, it was turbulent. Um, you know, we, we'd, um, we, we would go on a few uh, alcohol vendors. Uh, we would argue and we would fight quite a lot because we were trying to de-stress, we were trying to decompress. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was just the only way we knew how. Um, <clears throat> but after about two weeks, we would just ease our way back into it. Yeah, but it would take it would take two solid weeks to be honest. Your brain has to almost recalibrate itself to everyday life. Yeah, it was. Uh, and like you said, you know, finding the mechanisms of coping, dealing with life, uh, also sharing the experience with your partner. It, it, you know, yeah, it would be quite a journey. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It, 
it probably led to the breakdown of our marriage, to be honest. Um, well, yeah, it did. And it's one of the reasons why we, we ended up um, separating, so, yeah. Were you awarded any medals or citations and how did you get them? Uh, I was in 2015, I was awarded a, an American US military medal. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it's some award. Uh, for my uh, leadership running, the, um, I ended up being the uh, S5 uh, for that deployment, um, uh, basically looking after 100 odd um, soldiers uh, from the US and Australia. Um, and also writing the CENTCOM IO campaign plan for 2015. Um, so that's what I got the award for. What skills has the military taught you that has helped you in aspects of your life? Uh, certainly my um, devotion to fitness, uh, discipline, um, my, just my regimented day. Um, you know, you still, I still break, break my day up into 40, 40 minute time slots. Um, uh, my outlook in life uh, has certainly changed, especially after you've deployed. Uh, you realise uh, what the media tells you sometimes is not the truth. Uh, you realise you've got to check, check, your, check their sources. Uh, you become quite a, lot, a little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more circumspect, uh, and probably a little bit less trusting. So I suppose when I go to the gym, I don't, I don't push heavy pig anymore. Um, I'm just too old and I don't need to. Um, so I stick to supersets, um, eight to 10 reps, uh, not incredibly heavy. Um, I train four days a week. In between that, I run. I find that's what keeps my weight down is running uh, or swimming. Uh, in summer, I have a paddle board, which I use. Um, uh, and whenever I can, I dive. Winter, I, I ski, um, and uh, yeah, whenever I can, no matter what I do, I get out in the ocean, do anything in the ocean. Uh, it's great for mental health, but it's also good for my fitness as well. So. Avoid those sharks, young man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With me going out right now, it's very sharky. <laughs> it's, it's kept me fit uh, in my 46 years. I, I maintain my fitness. I think it also helps with my mental health. Um, I see a lot of guys, a lot of my peers, a lot of my friends, they stop working out and they stop trying uh, and they stop living and they just stop. Um, and I don't want to be that. I've seen some of your marathon photos, um, Nathan. Yeah, yeah. Circling somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you like your jujitsu. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I do love it. Yes, it's humbling. <laughs> you realise just how um, not good you are. Um, when you're getting owned by people half your size, uh, you realise, yeah, you, you are not the biggest kid in the room. Um, so it's good. Yeah, I do love that as it, well. It's getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's staying calm and focused. You have to. <laughs> um, so it's good. Yeah, I'm currently starting a business now. I'm, uh, I, I have a business that I've already started. It's a... It's looking at physical security uh, and training, um, a lot of online training. So that's in the embryonic stage. It was uh, it was doing well, and then COVID hit. Um, so I'm I'm still developing a website um, and um, and starting to build that that business. And what sorry, what was the business specialising in? Uh, physical security, um, getting uh, small medium businesses up to what's called Defence Industry Security Practices, so DISP, so they can um, get defence contracts and uh, work in that defence space. Um, and help, you know, the small and medium businesses um, find it quite difficult because they don't have the money to hire a security officer, um, et cetera, et cetera. Well, hopefully that's, I can help them out. Um, uh, work with supply chains uh, to secure our supply chains. Um, bringing a, uh, and this is a plug here, a company called Cybermerk, uh, who I worked with last year, they are fantastic, um, but they are incredibly good, probably some of the smartest people in the nation when it comes to cyber. Um, so bring them in as well, um, so they can help out these small and medium companies with um, their cyber security. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and what I'm also doing as well is working on uh, training aspects, so intelligence security training um, as well inside. So it's embryonic, it's very small, uh, but you gotta start somewhere, so. And is this some of the public speaking um, footage that I've seen you doing? Yeah, correct. This is in the same space? Same space. Great, great. So the public speaking footage is um, targeted to SMEs in the room? Um, so some of it was targeted to uh, people who were about to deploy. Um, so I provided their, their cyber security update um, for people who were about to deploy. And some of the other things as well was just uh, plugs for cyber merc um, and ads for cyber merc. If you met your 18 year old self face to face, what's one piece of advice you would say to your younger self? Hustle. <laughs> Hustle. Keep pushing. Keep pushing, don't give in. Stay hungry. Yeah. yeah. And I would probably ought to quiet where I tell them a few instances that they should not get themselves involved in. But <laughs> I won't mention that here. A few caveats. <laughs> yeah, a few caveats. Do not do certain things. Do not do that. Do not go out drinking with so and so. Um, but, Navy diaper boys, do you hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, um, no, that's probably the, and it's one thing I tell my son, I tell my son, um, you've got to keep hustling, you've got to keep working hard. Um, if you want to be the best in the room, you've got to work the hardest. Um, so that's, that's what I'd pass on to my 18 year old self and what I'd constantly tell my son. And you know what, there could be a hundred people in the room, but if there's that one person that really believes in you and um, sees your worth and your capabilities, that's one person that can make a world of difference, right? All the difference, yeah. What advice would you give to our worldwide Navy Diver fans and what's some inspiration they could apply to their everyday life? Oh, probably the same thing. Just keep Hand hustling. in hand, right? Yep, keep hustling, keep working. Uh, to be the smartest person in the room and the hardest work, working person in the room will make you the most successful, eventually. Um, that's probably the one bit of advice that I can pass on. Stay fit, stay healthy, stay happy, um, keep laughing, keep working. And keep your mental health in check, guys. Thank you so much, Nathan, for dedicating your time to Navy Diver, mate. I want to thank you for your near 30 years service to the Australian military. 